world country like Chicago, like Chicago Illinois or Detroit Michigan I've been both of those places Job chapter number one and uh, I want to preach a little while I can see the clock from here I guess that's been strategically located so preachers would see it and uh, I don't know very many in here I know a few and uh, but it's good to be in a place where your spirit bears witness. Amen. To be honest, the Lord's opened doors for me beyond my, my, my expectations. And I go a lot of places where I'm about out of place. I mean, I can tell when I walk in the door. I mean, um, and, uh, and usually I preach twice when I go, my first and my last at those kind of places. But uh, I can already see this is my kind of place. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate it. I met some friends from way back, and then some I've met at other meetings, and it's a pleasure. And your preacher, I met him over in Arkansas, and I've preached two or three of his messages already. Yeah. And uh, they good ones, man. And changing the world's mind, man, that's been a blessing. Yeah. Uh, I guess I owe you some royalty on that. I don't know. <laughs> We're in the book of Job tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and thank the Lord for his presence. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, and it's it would seem to the lost or even to some Christians that it's a ritual and it's just uh, something we do, a habit that we have. We announce a text, we stand behind a sacred desk and then pray. But I've traveled many miles today and my mind is weak and I stand here with burdens and I'm not complaining. I, I know you're the burden bearer. Uh, we can cast all our care upon you. But I pray tonight for my mama, you'd touch her body and touch my family down in Florida and the caretakers of her in their latter years, last days. And then I pray for Middle Tennessee Baptist Church where you've placed me, planted me for 33 years. I pray you hedge your protection around those good people and the purpose of God which you've called us to there in Middle Tennessee. And now I'm here because I'm in the will of God. I've come to help and so I pray you give me backbone tonight and boldness to say everything that I ought to say without any apology for the Word of God. At the same time, Holy Ghost, I pray for discernment and wisdom uh, beyond my experience that I wouldn't say anything that wouldn't glorify God, exhort saints. Uh, Lord, we want to please you with what we say. And so I pray you'd guard my lips. And then, Lord, I pray for the listener, just as I sincerely desire. And I can say it aloud, but you know my heart. Uh, and Lord, but, but I desire to be used and filled. I pray likewise for the listener tonight you'd cultivate an appetite for spiritual things. We're in a world that's filled us even since yesterday morning. Society has filled our spiritual receptors with everything but truth. And so I pray for a little while that you'd help us to empty out the things of this world and open our minds and hearts to the, to the Word of God. And show us something tonight that wouldn't only change our lives, but Lord, we're witnesses, and we're examples, and we're epistles read and learned, and help us not only to change the lives of our homes, but those in whom we have contact, our coworkers, our neighbors, our society, our school system, and Lord, give us a salt and light to make a difference. And we've already prayed it. I've heard the brother pray, if there's any lost amongst us tonight, I believe most people in this room are very religious people. They're familiar with the things of God. I, as we sung the song Redeemed, I didn't see anybody looking down at the words. We were familiar. But there may be some in here that's never been saved by the good grace of God. We'd, we'd be naive just to make an assumption because they're here on a Monday night that they're saved. And so, Lord, I pray old time Holy Ghost conviction would reveal to the lost person, lost man, woman, boy, or girl, that they need a Savior and let tonight be the last night they're lost. Save them tonight. Now use me. And, and for every result that we see, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Uh, Lord, I, I do want to thank you, just before we close this prayer, I want to thank you for local church, New Testament, visible body of believers, baptized. Thank you for the church. Thank you for a purpose to get up in the morning. Before we ask it now in Christ's name, amen. Now, everybody in here is probably very familiar with the book of Job, and you know the story. I mean, it's 42 chapters of one of the most difficult trials that humans have ever gone through or ever will. I, I've lived 60 years and I don't even know of a comparison uh, that I've pastored over 33 years at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church of anybody who could say, well, I know what Job's going through. 
because we don't know what Job's going through. But we can say without any hesitancy that he finished his life with integrity. Yes, sir. Uh, I've been around long enough, and some of you white-haired saints have known, known me a long time, known my daddy, and, and we've seen a lot of people leave this walk of life tragically, yes, sadly, I mean disappointingly, uh, starting out the right way, yeah. but because of circumstance right. and because of, uh, yeah. uh, of issues of life, they folded along the way. Yeah. I don't want that to be said about Middle Tennessee Baptist Church or Tony Hudson. I'd hate it to be that I'm in a casket one day in front of the pulpit and my children walk by and say, well, old daddy used to. I don't want my grandchildren to come by and say, old papa used to stand for something. But somewhere down the line he caved in. The truth is we're seeing that everywhere. Uh, and I'm not being negative. One of my heroes of the faith, I, 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 I pattern after great men, I try to use them as examples, uh, but, but I think about one of the men that was very influential in my life. It, it came to the end of his life. I went to see him last three days of his life, and we were sitting talking. He said, well, Tony said, you know, said, we're victims of prophecy. And he was trying to soothe me to the fact that our churches are, are thinning down, uh, that apostasy, great, great, falling away. We're seeing that. Evil men and seducers have waxed worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. He began, to, he began to expound upon the thoughts that, you know, we can't undo the prophetic truth of God's word that there's going to be an age where the sun sets on grace and at that time coming, there's going to be some falling away. There's going to be some, there's going to be some disappointment. And I, and I thought to myself without correcting him, he's a great man. And uh, he's, he was my senior by many years and and a veteran in the ways of God. And, and I thought, though I didn't say it out loud, I said, yeah, we are victims of prophecy. And we can't help. The Bible said it's going to be like it is. Amen. I mean, uh, ungrateful, thanksgiving, unholy, all of that stuff. Y'all know what it says. And I thought to myself, yeah, but we don't have to be victimized by the prophecy. To think about that. Not everybody has to cave in. That's right. There has to be some remnant. A remnant is a, yeah. is a small portion of the original pattern. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to finish as a remnant. Yes, yeah. I, I don't want to compromise on the way out. I don't want to dip my colors. I don't want to say I wish I had, uh, but I want to be able to say when it's all said and done, I'm glad I did, praise yeah. God. And Job was that. He had all the right to quit. He had all the right to throw in the towel. I mean, he had the worst wife I've ever known told him to cuss God and die. It was always interesting to me how the devil had the right to take everything that he had, but he let him keep his wife because he knew that she was going to be against him the whole time. Amen. I mean, he was, he, she was one of his tools in his hand. And, but he finished. Now, I want to say a few things. Y'all pray for me because I really don't have no order to this message, but I, I got a message. He finished with integrity, and he finished, and, and as I age in my life and pastor it, uh, he's become more of a hero, Brother Joe's become more of a hero to me than the, than the apostolic forefathers. He's become more of a hero to me than the patriarchs of the Old Testament because I have not experienced exactly what he's gone through, but I've been disappointed. Amen. Somebody asked me the other day, how's things going to the church? I said, well, I'm pleased, but I'm not satisfied. I'm disappointed the way things are going. I've been heartbroken. Family has broken my heart. Friends have broken my heart. I've been disappointed. I've been disillusioned. Yes, sir. Uh, hey Amen. Yes. Uh, I've been discouraged. I'm not being yeah. negative. I'm just being honest. That's right. That's right. And he made it through all of that. He made it through. I mean, with friends like Job had who need enemies, praise yeah. God. Yeah. And he made it through all of that, and he ended his life with integrity. Yeah. With integrity. Now, understand, he didn't have what we had. He knew a few things. God's designed mankind and creation. We have innate knowledge. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Right. He knew there was a God yep. Yep. without a Bible. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. This is the oldest literary page right. of Scripture. All the theologians say, the greats say that this is the earliest pen before Moses wrote Genesis, right. Exodus, Genesis, right. Numbers. Right. This was recorded. Yep. The oldest literary page of Scripture. Mm. He didn't have a Bible, but he knew there was a God. Yep. He said, though the skin worms devour this body, yet in my flesh shall I see. He knew there was going to be life after death. 
I believe everybody in the world, there's no such thing as an atheist. Don't even believe that. That's that. All that is is a straw man to argue with somebody. Hey, they're born knowing nature itself. I can't declare that there is a God. Hey, there's a God out yonder, friend. The firmament, they declare his handiwork. God, the creator, and he is, and he, and he always will be. And, and mankind wants to put out, well, I don't believe in God. No, everybody, everybody's born with a knowledge of the hereafter, a, a, a conscience, light uh, and truth, and, and they reject it. And when they reject it, sooner they'll become seared and they'll be turned over. Yeah. But now listen to me. Job didn't have a Bible, but he knew there was a God. Job didn't have a Bible, but he knew in his flesh he would see God one day. Job didn't have a Bible, but he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He didn't have those verses on faith. For faith is a substance of things, hope of the evidence of things I'm saying. He didn't know that the just shall live by faith, but he just said, I'm going to trust him anyway. Without a Bible. Amen. Job didn't have a Bible. Hey, man, Job didn't have a Bible. Hey, man, Job didn't have a Bible, but he finished with integrity. Job didn't have a local New Testament Bible-believing Baptist church. Thank God for the church. I got. I met my wife in church. I got saved in church. I married in church. Hey, all this jumping out of airplanes, getting married, that's for the birds. Somebody help me. Hey, man, I see them burying on horses and burying up in deer stands. God help you. Get married in church right here in the altar. Thank God for the church. If it's happening at the church, you ought to be there. If they're having a cock fight at church, bring a shorter rooster. Somebody say amen and be ready to go. If it's happening at the New Testament local visible body, that's where you need to be Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, every night of the revival, amen. Hey, be there all the time. Be there faithful. Be at the house of God. Thank God. But he didn't have a church. And still finished his life with integrity without a mark on him. With all in all of this, he said he charged, he never charged God foolishly. He didn't have a mark on him. You study it, neighbor. I don't know all the Bible, but I've read this one pretty good right here. Everybody okay? He didn't have no mark on him. Hey, man. Without a church. He didn't have the Holy Ghost. He didn't have the Holy Ghost. Amen. What I meant to say was he didn't have the Holy Ghost. Aren't you glad when you do wrong, the Holy Ghost reproves you? Aren't you glad when you do right, the Holy Ghost, he can so he, he pats you on the back? Don't you know he the happiness, the joy of the Lord's our strength? Amen. Let us not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord? Hey, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making belly. Hey, said, be filled with, be not drunk with wine. Where is it it says? But be filled with the Holy Spirit. But guess what? He didn't have one. Didn't have a Holy Ghost, sir. Didn't have a Bible. He didn't have a King James Bible. He didn't have a Masoretic or, or a received text. He didn't have neither one of them, didn't have a Holy Ghost, didn't have a church. As far as we know, he didn't have a preacher. Thank God for men who made impacts on my life. We were just talking with some of the church members about Dr. Seitler and my wife. I'll never, never forget, I was out plowing the garden, and my wife hollered from the front. In Tennessee, we don't, we don't, we don't come, we holler. We roll up windows and say, hey, baby. And, and I was playing the garden. She said, Daddy. And I said, What? She said, Dr. Seitler's on the phone. I said, He ain't done it. <laughs> this is about 30 years ago. Yeah. Said, Dr. Seitler, Daddy, he's on the phone. I said, He ain't, he ain't, ain't, ain't no way he's on the phone. Yeah. And she said, Yeah, he is. And I said, If I come up there and he ain't on the phone, we're we going to have to have counseling. Yeah. <laughs> or you got to bail me out one. Somebody say, Amen. Everybody okay? Yeah. Man, I tied them mules in the garden. I walked up and the doctor said, he, 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 he said, just Tony. Man, I like to pass out. <laughs> Harold B. Seitler, yeah. Tabernacle Baptist Church, yeah. White Horse Road, Greenville, South Carolina, USA. Yeah. Boy, what an impact he had on me. Yeah. Great men, and all of us can look back at men who influenced us yeah. and molded yeah. us. Right. Amen. Yeah. Paul said, be a follower of me as I'm a yeah. follower of Christ. Right. And I thank God for those type men. Yeah. 
But we don't have a record of one mentor that Job had. He didn't have anybody's picture on his wall. You go in preacher's office, first thing you're going to see is their preachers, their favorite, those men who've influenced them. Amen. Like Robert E. Lee. Somebody say amen. Like Nathan Bedford Forrest. Like Stonewall Jackson. I need help. Somebody say amen. If you don't love it, leave it, praise God. There's plenty of room in Michigan for you. Somebody say amen. Hey, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about he didn't have any mentors. And he finished with integrity. Man, we've got a whole lot. And already the church age in these last days of the Laodicean church have developed a loser's mentality. All I hear is how hard it is. How bad it is. Amen. I mean, gloom, despair, and agony on me. That's all I'm hearing. It's so hard. No, the way of the transgressor is hard. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Now, I hadn't got to the message. I'm, this is introduction, but I'm going to get to it. All that he had, all that he had was found in verse 5. He said, it was so that when the days of their feasting were gone about, Job sent and sanctified them, and he rose up early in the morning and offered what? According to the number of them all, and Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts, Thus Job did continually. Now, he, what, did, what was he doing? He was, he was offering a what? Okay. That goes back to tradition. That's the word that these moderates and liberals and contemporaries can't stand. All them Facebook bunch of gurus. Amen. They can't stand tradition. They all, all they want to ask you all the time, uh, why do you, why do y'all, why do y'all do that? What verse do y'all have for that? Yeah. What verse do you have for breathing? Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have to have a verse yeah. for everything I do. Yeah. Now don't get nervous, I'm a biblicist. Yeah. And our whole basis right. it, it, for doctrine and practice yeah. is the word of God. Yeah. But there's some things called traditions. Yeah. Yeah. It's in Thessalonians. And this is strong. Why don't you turn over there with me? I just want you to see it. I want you to see what happened. Turn over there to Thessalonians, and I want you to look at it. I ain't even got to preach in this introduction. Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. He said, finally, wrapping it up to the church at Thessalonica. That's page 1272 if you got one like mine. I don't know what it is on your Ruckman Bible. Is everybody okay? <laughs> finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And that you may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Now notice the context of unreasonable and wicked men. We're going to get that. Just underline that. Who, who, is the, who are these people? Well, it said they're reasonable and they have not faith. That's right. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Mm -hmm. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that both you will do the things which you've been commanded. I'm commanding you. I'm going to command you to do some things in verse number five. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now notice what the commandment is in verse six. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's. Let me stop. That's stout. You got that. yeah. That's stout. Let me say a commandment. Yeah. First of all, a Pauline commandment would have been stout to me. If Paul had told me to jump up and stand on my head, I'd have got two or three of y'all to prop me up. Yeah, right. I wouldn't even ask questions. Hey right. Amen. I, I, I'd have went to gymnastic class and learned how to do a, a, a twirl. Somebody help me. Yeah. Cartwheel. Hey Amen. Yeah. If Paul had said do it, I'd have tried. Yeah. But he said, I'm not just telling, I'm not suggesting, I'm commanding you, you do this. Because right. he said, I've got confidence you're going to keep my command. Well, what's this command, sir? He said, I command you that you withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the doctrines, the doctrinal truths. No, they don't, they don't walk after what? Traditions. All Job had, and he, and he died with integrity, 
was the tradition of Abel. That's all he had. He had no Bible. He just had a tradition where Cain, the representative of, of disorderly, yes, sir. evil men, That's right. the context, those that will not follow tradition, mm -hmm. like Red Book singing, yeah. 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 like four-part harmony, yeah. Yeah. like parts in songs instead of words on a wall. That's right. yeah. You don't have to like this. You can lump this, bump this, fall over and shake like a dog with fleas. Hey, I come in here to preach now, friend. Yeah. And you, all you're going to do is be wrong when you argue with me. That's right. All you're going to be is wrong. Look, go and get ready to be wrong. Because yeah. all Job had was the story that there was this man named Abel. Yeah, that's good, preacher. And he had a sacrifice that he made to God. Amen. He didn't have a verse for it. Yeah. Well, what's your, I don't think you have to have a verse for opening the door for a lady. Yeah, right. It's just called manners. That's right. What's your verse? What's your verse? Well, I'm just sick of that. What's your verse for that? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. I tell you what, my verse is called respect. That's right. I don't have to have a verse for respect. That's just right. That's right. You ought to know. People know better than be disrespectful. Hey, they're born with that conscience. Yeah. And all that he had, he didn't have King James. He didn't have that. All he had was a tradition, one tradition of burnt offerings. Yeah. And he continually did it. He didn't change. Yeah. Come temporary. You know what that means? Come means get your attention. Temporary means for a little while. What he did lasted, he said he did it continually. Years and years, he just kept on doing the same thing the same way. Now, back home, it's about hog killing time. It'll be cold next week, and there'll be a whole lot of black, 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 iron, black, black iron pots, and there'll be, a whole, I mean, there'll be a whole lot of hog killing going on in Tennessee. We still do that. Yeah. Everybody, we got meat houses yeah. and salt. Everybody okay? Yeah. There ain't no books on that. Yeah. I know exactly where to shoot a hog with a 22 short and he'll fall in his tracks. Yeah. Yeah. I can pop him with the butt end of an axe yeah. and he'll fall in his tracks, be dead as a, a graveyard, dead, dead as a hammer. Yeah. I know how to scald and I know how to scrape. I know how to render lard. I know how to strain it through cheesecloth. I know how to grind sausage. I know how to mix up. There ain't no book on that. Yeah. It's a tradition. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. It's a tradition that's been handed down. Yeah. It's an unwritten practice. Yeah, that's good. All, all Job had was tradition. Mm -hmm. that's good. And we're wanting to trade our birthright for a bowl of pottage. Yeah. 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 Well, right. well, what's your verse for that? Mm -hmm. Amen. You're right. What he did. Now listen to me, and, I, and I'm going to preach for about two hours. Go ahead. Yeah. I believe I will. I'm start, a while ago, I had butterflies in my stomach. Now they're flying in formation. Praise yeah. God. Praise yeah. God. We got a whole lot. Yes, got a Bible. Yes, we got a church. Yes. We, got, we got a Holy Ghost. Yes. We got mentors. Yes. We got history. We got history. Yes, sir. Yep. Right. But now watch this. There's some things that we know now that we know that Job didn't know, and Job still finished with integrity. Yeah. Let's look at chapter one of Job. Y'all still there? Yeah. Boy, it's taking way too long to get to here. Can y'all handle this a little bit of preaching? Yeah. My sermons are like a fat woman calling through a barbed wire fence. A few more points, and I'll be through. Just hang on with me, just a minute. <laughs> Y'all know what's taking place in chapter 1. The devil's been walking up and down in the earth. Yeah. And he's looking for some, for some examples and he can't find anybody doing right. Mm -hmm. Kind of sounds like 2022. Yeah. But all of a sudden he comes up to God and he says, ain't nobody doing right. Yeah. Yeah. In verse 8, the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? Yeah. That there's none like him in all the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Yeah. And Satan answered and said, Well, doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Hast thou not blessed the works of his hand and the substance of his increase in the land? But you put forth thy, thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. 
only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And y'all know what took place. The onslaught of attack began that moment against yeah, right. Job. Yes, sir. Now here's my message. Without access to all that we have, Job had no idea that God had put him in a contest. But we do. We wrestle against flesh and blood. Hebrews 12 said we're in a race. We're, we're, we're competitors. And, and by the way, I'm highly competitive. I trip a little girl in a foot race to win. I'm t I'm, okay. If I'm playing checkers, praise God, and I start losing, I, I trip and flip the board over. So, amen. We got to start off. I'm sorry, we got to start over. New game. Amen. That's, that's with a six-year-old grandson. Amen. Y'all okay? <laughs> Stay with me. I'm a competitor. I don't understand how, how Job was so motivated without even knowing. He didn't even know he was in a contest. But every day he got up out of that pile of ashes. He had boils from the top of his head. The soles of his feet. He was scraping pus off of the boy with a piece of pot shear. He had flies blowing all over him. He had a wife over there cussing him out, telling him, won't you cuss God and die? He had friends that doubted him. They were second guessing his yeah. integrity. Yeah. They was telling him something wrong with you somewhere, friend. Hey, hey, you messed up somewhere, Job. I, I'm sure inside there was a war going on. I, I, he didn't know what to do. I, can I do it again? But without even knowing that God was counting on him, he still got up. He didn't contemplate suicide. Amen. He didn't try to overdose, hang himself in the barn. Blow his head off with a shotgun. You know what he did? He just got up the next day. Yeah. Got up and pushed some more ashes on him. Yeah. Got up, scraped some, got up and looked over there and planted some grass on the graveyard. Got up, praise God, looked where his house used to be. Got up, looked where his barns used to be. And he said, The Lord give it. And the Lord take it away. The Lord give it. And the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Without knowing. God had put him in a contest with the devil. Well, we know God's counting on us. Well, wouldn't that want to motivate us to make it? Because God's counting on you to make it. God's counting on you not to quit. God's counting on you not to throw in the towel. Amen. Whatsoever the hand finds do it with all thy might. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Let us not grow weary and well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall might have the wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Listen to me, friend. Hey, God's counting on us to finish. He had no concept. He had no concept. He had no idea there was a hedge about him. We already know that nothing's going to happen to the believer unless it goes across the desk of God Almighty. So the devil has limits on us. We already know that the devil has some limits on us. The devil can't send us to hell, we're saved. I don't think he had any concept that God had put a hedge about him. He's probably constantly, I mean, I do it now. I've had nine church splits in 33 years. We're going through one right now. Is everybody okay? I mean, I'll I, I look over my shoulder everywhere. If somebody pats me on the back, I think they're wiping off a place to stab. Somebody say amen. Is everybody okay? All the time, I'm, I'm second getting looking, knee jerking, looking over my look. I mean, like a rooster on point. Somebody help me. I mean, I, I'm going, what, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Y'all okay? But he got up every day, not knowing, not knowing what was going to happen next. We already know Romans 8 28. We got that one. You know, that's for us. Yeah. Yeah. For we know that all things. Yeah. See, we know Romans 8, 28, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. See, we got that. Right. I've been through some stuff. I had to hang on to 8, 28. Yeah. You're right. You live long enough, you'll have to grab 8, 28. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, you'll have to grab 8, 28 every once in a while. Yeah. For we know that all things work together for the good that love God, them that are called according to his purpose. Right. But guess what? Job didn't have 8, 28. Right. 
How come we people's quitting all the time, falling out on us, can't make it to Sunday night and Wednesday night, get mad at the preacher uh, over here going to this contemporary bunch of out of hell stuff? I said out of hell. They're not following tradition. They're evil men, it says right there. They said evil and wicked. I said that authorized. Hey, is everybody okay? He had no idea he had a hedge around him and still got up every day. Ain't y'all liking Job better than you did a while ago? I've always liked Job pretty good, but man, I'm, I'm telling you, he, Job's the man, friend. Job is the man. Hallelujah. He had no idea how long it was going to last. He had no idea how long it was going to last. You know what gets me through a lot of things? I know that's coming to an end soon. Three score and ten, I'm not looking forward to death. He didn't say he's a crown for those that love their disappearing. It's a crown for those that love his appearing. But, but, but I mean, heaven's real, and, and, and I'm not trying to be morbid, but I've lived down here a long time. I'm not trying to be morbid. I hope my family don't hear it. They get depressed when I say it, but I'm ready to leave out of here. Amen, I'm about ready. It, it, it doesn't scare me. It don't, death don't scare me. It, it, it's gain to me. Amen. But he didn't know. How long he could take it. I wonder how many times he got up and that next night when he went to lay down said, I don't know if I can take this no more. My friends are despising me. I ain't got a dime. I can't rub two nickels together. I couldn't buy air if they sell it for a nickel a jug. Somebody help me. I'm hurting all over more than anywhere else. My back belly and both sides hurts. My wife's cussing at me. I told her to shut up. That's in the originals. Yeah. Hey, man, y'all okay? Yeah. Hey, hey, he didn't even know if he could make it the next day. Right. He didn't know how much he could take. Yeah. But we know this. We know this. For I can do all things through Christ. We know greater is he that's in us. Yeah. I believe that too. Yeah. See, I, I'm, I'm hung up on that one. Greater is he, I can take it. There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful. And with every temptation, not some of them, but every one of them will make a way of escape that you may be able to bury. God, hey, we know that. Job didn't know that. And still finished with integrity. If this ain't helping nobody else, it's helping me. I'm getting blessed. Pray. Preach on, Brother Tony. That's good right there. I'm getting blessed from my own preaching. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He had no idea this was being recorded. Now, we got cameras everywhere now. I quit picking my nose at a red light. Somebody say amen. They get a picture of you up there. Everybody okay? Cameras are everywhere, man. They're, they're watching all this reality TV, everything. And they're watching everything you do, everywhere you go. He had no idea that the Holy Ghost had a recorder and had 42 chapters and was keeping it all written so, so thousands, thousands of years later we'd be in Hamlet, North Carolina sitting here near the rapture of the church trying to make it, trying to go through, trying to hang on, trying to endure to the end, praise God, trying to make it till the trumpet sounds, trying to stand fast and having done all to stand. He didn't know that his testimony was going to be recorded so we could look at it and make application to it and leave here tonight, praise God, stay and we're going to stand for God, come hell or high water, live fat or die, skinny, loved or hated, hey, liked or despised. We're going to stay with it because Job, Job didn't have what we have. And still made it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, the whole thing being recorded. We already know we're epistles. Yes, sir. By the way, an epistle is not an apostle's wife. I just found that out in one of, Ruckman, in one of Peter Ruckman's books. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Y'all okay? Yeah, that's right. An epistle is not an apostle's wife. An epistle is a letter. Right. Your letters, your, your, they're reading your life. Yeah. Right. He didn't know people's going to read his life. Yeah. Man, I don't want to mess up. 
I don't want to cave in to the peer, peer pressure. Peer pressure don't bother me. You can tell me I'm fat. Look at me. That don't bother me at all. Somebody said, don't you hate being fat? I said, no, I hate being hungry worse. Yeah. Somebody asked me today, are you hungry? I said, no, I, I eat to keep from getting that way. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody all right? Yeah, amen. Hey, I don't want to mess up because yeah. they're watching. That's right. My friends are watching. You're right. My family's watching. Right. My foes, I definitely don't want to mess up because my foes, all they want, all they want, the old time crowd, all they want is this old guard to do is mess up. So they, all they want to do is see us throw in the towel and quit. So they can say, I told you. I told you it wasn't real. I say, bless God, hey, live fat or die skinny. Stay with it. Job stayed with it. Hey, man, right there. He had no idea, but we know. It ought to motivate us. I got about seven more, but y'all can't handle it. Is that clock right? Man, that's early. I can't quit this early. Praise God. He must have changed the thing, praise God. Let me just skip to, just go on to chapter, go to chapter 42. I'm going to get over some stuff up. The last chapter. Job made it. Job finished. The Bible said, verse 12, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she-asses. And he had also seven more sons and three daughters. That was the punishment on his wife for running that mouth. <laughs> Don't you know she wished she had left him earlier on? <laughs> she told him to die. She wished she had her. <laughs> had, to, had, to, had to deliver 10 more. And verse 16, and after this he lived 140 years and saw sons and his sons' sons and even four generations. And Job died being old and full of days. That full of days means he completed his, his task in life. He didn't leave any empty days. He was full of days. He fulfilled his purpose. That's what I want to do. I'm sure back there when he was planting the flowers around the graves of his daughters, He's thinking, I'll never see any grandchildren. We won't have a happy Christmas around our house no more. He didn't know that the end was better than the beginning. Now, don't get excited about it. Just stay calm. But we know, we, we've got a little insight on that. There is a land that is fairer than that. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. The end's going to be better than the beginning. What a motive. What a motive to, to stay with it. You're in the right kind of church, stay with her. You got the right kind of preacher, stay with him. You got the right kind of Bible, stay with it. We've got a right kind of dictated purpose from God's word, going to all over, yes. preaching gospel, every. Let's yes, just sir. keep doing it. Yes, sir. You're exactly right. It's right. Yes, sir. It is. Job had no access. Mm. Mm. He had no promise that it's going to get any better. Right. Right. But we know it's going to get better from here. Yes. Heaven's real. Yes, sir. It's not some figment of our imagination. It's a place of 12 foundations, walls of jasper, yeah. gates of pearl, a street of pure gold, yes, sir. a tree of life that bears 12 manners of fruit mm -hmm. that's there for the healing of the nations. Mm -hmm. There'll be no night there. No, sir. There'll be no night. It's daytime over there. There'll be no graveyards over there. No, no, right. no, no grave diggers' shovels ever marred the hillsides of Zion. That's right. No, no funeral homes. No, sir. 
no hospitals to visit. I had a member call on the way over here. He had to be rushed to the hospital. He, his uh, his, uh, a pen, uh, his uh, gallbladder has, has infected and it's erupted inside. They, they've drained and bile and all out of me. He might not even make it. I was talking to him on the phone. He said, Brother Tony, you be careful over there preaching. His by words, one thing. Brother Sammy Scruggs, he said, one thing. He said, don't worry about me. One thing, I know where I'm going. He said, one thing, if something happens to me, one thing, don't worry about it. I know where I'm going. We know it's a better place. Job had no idea the end was going to be better. Why don't tonight, with God's help, as the pianist comes, heads are bowed and eyes are closed, why don't we just say, with God's help, not in a prideful sense, but if Job could do it with nothing but tradition, thank God he stayed with tradition. With all of the tools God's left behind for us, why don't we just say, man, we're going to stay with it. Not, not say, I wish I had. Not look back and regret. But look back and rejoice. We can. God's no respecter of persons. Paul the Apostle was able to finish his course with joy. He said, I fought a good fight. He said, now I'm now ready. The time I departure, he said, and I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. If he can finish right, we can finish right. If Job can finish right, if Job can end his life with integrity, there will not be one reason why anybody in here shouldn't be here next year and the next year and the next year until the trumpet sounds. Don't become one of the tragedies. Don't become one of the heartbreaks. Don't become one of the heartaches of the church. Stay faithful. Our Heavenly Father, take the message, and I pray it would be etched deep in our minds. We're living in an hour of blatant disregard. We've forgotten about the examples that are set before us. We've forgotten about great men like Job and what he did without the tools we have access to. Even so much more, we should be able to finish our course. Let it be said of this good place. I pray, God, let it be said of this good place, these good people that they made a difference even unto the end. If you're here tonight and you're lost, these altars are open to you. And you don't need to leave here lost. The worst mistake you can ever make is to just suppose you can do this any time. If God's drawing your heart, he wants you to be saved now. Why don't you just come on this altar and we'll know what day. Hey, God will save you if you'll come. I guarantee the preacher's here. There'll be somebody here to help you. You come tonight with a repentant spirit, come to the, to the altar. God will save you tonight. Don't quench him. Don't grieve him. Don't resist him. While she plays, you mind the Lord. Pastor, you come. You need to be in any hurry. You come talk to the Lord. Boy, that's good. What a God we have. We are truly without excuse. No doubt. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand and sing. Three seventy four in your Red's home book. Yeah, that's three seventy four. Sing it out. Mean it.
appreciate that good preaching tonight. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Make it hard to grumble and complain with all we got when you hear what Job didn't have and how he made it with the Lord. And good preaching, amen. Pray for the services tomorrow. Just pray for yourself. Pray for others. Pray for those that are out sick tonight that God will touch them. I'm glad we can stream it, and I'm glad they can hear it that way. It ain't nothing like being in church. So pray God to give them a special touch and some speedy recovery so they can get in this meeting and get some help down at the house of God. Amen. So you pray God to touch them. I know they'd appreciate it. I know there's people out tonight that would love to be here worshiping the Lord. Amen. So pray for them. Amen. Amen. Anything else? What'd you say? Saturday? Huh? Oh, my wife said if y'all all do real good at revival, all the women are going shopping Saturday. So that means y'all women ain't going shopping, amen. But I think they got some kind of shopping thing settled. Uh, you talk to her about details and about it, you get it all going, amen. And tomorrow, everybody that can, we're going to eat barbecue here at the church. I think the lady's going to cook some sides. We've got a bunch of barbecue. And so everybody's welcome to come at 530. Be a good time. We'll do it at 530 and have a good time of, of eating and good time of preaching again tomorrow night. You pray for the preacher. Pray for the needs going on at his church. And he, while he's away, you know how that is. And then his needs of his mama down in Florida that we told you about. Pray God to give her some special touch also. Amen. 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 All hearts clear tonight. Amen. And good to be at church, ain't it? Amen. I like going to church and know I've been to church. Amen. Amen. Invite somebody out. Well, this kind of preaching to help somebody, won't it? Amen. Amen. Brother Kevin, how about dismiss this, brother?